Welcome to the Shaw Backpack Class. I'm Jess from SallyTomato.com. Join me to create this handy backpack that comes in three sizes. Step by step, I'll show you how to attach foam stabilizer, install a zipper pocket, make a gusset to add depth to your bag, create padded straps out of cork fabric or cotton, attach ladder lock buckles, which make your straps adjustable, how to attach a handle, and how to install a double slide zipper closure on the flap. The entire project has been designed to avoid bias binding and a drop in lining. This backpack has a hidden turning hole so it gives your bag a professional finish. The completed backpack is great for carrying all of your essentials. Three sizes are included in the pattern so you can make a backpack for any age. The written instructions and your supplies will need to be purchased separately. So grab your supplies and let's get started. The first step in the pattern is to attach the foam to the coordinating pieces. You're going to attach your foam to all of your main fabric pieces. This butterfly cork fabric is going to be my main fabric. So find your main fabric front top piece for whichever size you're making. I'm going to be making the medium size bag in this video, but all of the steps will be the same for any size that you're making. Then you're going to have your fabric right side up. And so this is the wrong side. So with right sides up, you're gonna layer it on top of the foam that is the coordinating size for the top panel. Then you're gonna take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch the top front piece to the foam with a quarter inch seam allowance on all four sides. And I like to increase my stitch length a little bit longer so it's more of a basting stitch. This is just meant to hold the main fabric to the foam. And one other tip is you can take some basting spray or fabric glue or tape and adhere it to the wrong side of your fabric and that will help keep your fabric from shifting. I also like to use Wonder Clips and you can add some around the sides to help keep your fabric in place. After sewing, you can trim any of the excess foam, even with the side edges, and you'll repeat the same process for the main fabric front bottom panel and coordinating foam, the main fabric back piece, both of the main fabric side panels, both of the main fabric gussets, only two of the main fabric straps, only if you're using cotton. I'm using cork fabric, so I'm not going to baste any foam to any of my cork straps. And also the main fabric flap piece. So you'll top stitch the foam to each of those and we'll move on to the next step. If you're using cork fabric for your main fabric on your bag, then you're going to follow this section. If you are using cotton fabric, then you can fast forward to the next section of instructions. So take your main fabric front bottom panel, and first we're gonna mark a horizontal line 7 8 inches down from the top edge, and mark a horizontal line all the way across. Then we're gonna mark two horizontal lines in from each of the side edges. And this measurement depends on whichever size that you're making. And I'm making the medium, so I'm gonna measure in an inch and three quarters in from each side edge and mark a vertical line. So refer to the pattern for whichever size you're making for the measurement that you need to mark. Then you're gonna cut along the indented section that we created. So it's gonna be a box that we're gonna cut out and just cut along those marked lines with your scissors. And one other tip to help make it easier to install the zipper later because the zipper is gonna go in this area is to flip your project over and cut away about a quarter of an inch more of the foam. So that way it'll help reduce bulk later on. So just trim the foam away. Leave your fabric the size that we cut it. So this is prepared and we're ready to move on to the next step. 
If you chose to use cotton for your project, you'll follow this section of instructions. If you followed the previous section on how to prepare your cork bottom panel, then you can fast forward to the next section. So if you're using cotton, then there's an additional piece that you'll need to cut out. It's called the facing for cotton front bottom. So this piece will help finish off the raw edge where we're gonna put our zipper. So make sure you cut out that piece and you're gonna place it right sides together, centered along the top edge of your bottom panel. And you're gonna top stitch the facing in place a quarter inch from the indented section on your sewing machine. Then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna trim the seam allowance to 1 8 inch wide. You can also take your scissors and cut up to the corners and that'll help when we turn this and you'll see in a minute. And then I also flip it over and trim off some of that extra foam and that'll help reduce some of the bulk. Then you're going to take the facing and you're going to turn it so that way the facing and the front bottom panel are wrong sides together. So you'll just press this with your iron to the wrong side and you can use your fingers to roll the seam to make sure that the seam is right along that very top edge. And you could use some pins to help hold this in place while you take it over to your iron and give it a good press and steam so it lays flat. Take your lining pocket A and B pieces and make sure you have the width going across. And the first step is you're going to fold and press the bottom edge a half inch against the wrong side. And you'll do that for both pieces. And one tip is to use a hot ruler. This is a Notion by Clover. And I love using this for making pockets and um, folding over edges. So all you have to do is you position it on your fabric on the wrong side, and then you just fold your fabric up against that half inch line. And what's great about the hot ruler is you can press over this with your iron and it won't melt. So that way you can get your perfect seam allowance and a perfect press. So you'll do that for both of your pocket pieces. Then you can set your panel B aside and you're gonna position your pocket A with the right side up and make sure that folded edge is along the bottom and grab your zipper that you're going to be using for your pocket and refer to your instructions for the size that you need. I'm using Sally Tomato Nylon Coil Zippers. So these have a metallic finish, so they look like metal, so I'm gonna coordinate to all the hardware that I use. But since the coil is nylon, I can cut and sew directly over the teeth. So if you're interested in learning more about Zipper by the Yard, check out our website and our YouTube channel. So you're gonna position your zipper so that way the pull closes to the right. And you're going to position that top raw edge of the zipper along that top raw edge of your pocket A. And you're going to have the right side of your fabric up and the right side of your zipper up. So you're going to top stitch the zipper to the pocket with a quarter inch seam allowance across the top. I've switched over to my narrow foot on my sewing machine, but you could also use a zipper foot or you could just move the zipper pull out of the way as you sew. So you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and I've changed my stitch length to two and a half millimeters. Then you're going to take this over to your iron and press the zipper away from the lining 
and have the zipper tape flat. So the zipper should be right side up and then your lining piece should be wrong side up now. And this is what it will look like from the opposite side. So this will be looking inside your pocket. But for now, we're going to leave this positioned as is. And we're going to take our main fabric front bottom panel and place it right sides up over the zipper pocket. But before we do that, one tip is to take some double-sided basting tape and we're going to stick it to each of the long edges of the zipper and this will help with positioning the zipper. So just stick it along each of the raw edges of the zipper and press it down to make sure it's adhered really well and then just peel off the paper. Now when we go to position this Make sure that it is centered over the zipper and you're going to align the top raw edge of the zipper with the top raw edge of your bottom panel. And then also make sure that your zipper is inside the indented section. You wouldn't want it underneath your fabric here. So just position it and stick it down. And what's really nice about using the Wonder Tape when you're using cork fabric is you're not supposed to use pins on cork fabric. So this helps keep it from moving since we can't put any pins in. But you could also take a wonder clip and then just add a clip here and over here to the other top edge to keep it from shifting. So then you're gonna take this over to your sewing machine and you're gonna top stitch along the indented section with 1 8 inch seam allowance from that raw edge. And I'm going to increase my stitch length to about three. I personally like a little bit longer of a top stitch. It looks a little bit more decorative. So now you can remove the wonder clips. And next we're going to take our lining pocket B and make sure that that folded edge is along the bottom and you're gonna place the lining fabrics right sides together and we can flip this over so you can see a little bit better and you're gonna align all the edges so make sure the top edges, the sides, and the bottoms are aligned and your bottom edges should line up evenly but depending on your seam allowance or your zipper sometimes they don't line up perfectly so maybe yours is a little bit longer so then you can just fold it just a little bit deeper so that way those bottom edges line up. Mine line up, so I'm going to flip this back over to the other side and add some wonder clips along the top edge. And you're going to sew those lining pieces together along the top edge starting and stopping at your previous stitching. So you're only going to sew on the zipper tape up to your stitch lines. Don't go any more beyond that. And you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. Then we're going to sew the side edges of the pocket. So all you're going to do is fold away the main fabric front and you're going to line up these side edges and you're going to sew down the side with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then you'll repeat for the other side of the pocket. But this time you'll want to start on the bottom edge and then sew up to the top edge of the zipper. So after your sides are sewn, then your pocket is prepped. Make sure that your bottom edge stays unsewn. We're going to leave this open. It's going to be used for turning our bag right side out later at the end. Take your main fabric front top piece and front bottom piece and you're going to align the bottom edge of the top along the top edge of the bottom. So position them right sides together, make sure the side edges are aligned 
and those raw edges are even. Use some Wonder Clips to hold the layers together. And you'll take this over to your sewing machine and sew along the top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Be conscious of your zipper pull as you sew. You won't want it to accidentally swing into your seam allowance. So just make sure that you move that out of the way as you sew. And you might need to cut your threads and move the zipper pull out of the way so that way your foot isn't in the way at all. So if you do that, then start where you left off and make sure to backstitch. So next, trim away as much of the foam as possible from the seam allowance and this will help reduce bulk. Then you're going to fold the top panel away from the bottom panel and you'll have the seam allowance towards the top of the bag and you're going to top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance from the seam that we just made. So you'll have your seam going towards the top edge so you can press that over at your iron if you'd like. And you're going to sew along the seam with one eighth inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to lengthen my top stitch again to three millimeters so it looks a little bit more decorative. Take both of your gusset pieces and you're going to place them right sides together and make sure that you align all the edges. And you're going to align these bottom edges and sew just the bottom together with a half inch seam allowance. Then you're going to open up the gusset and take your fingers and press the seam allowance open. And you're going to top stitch on each side of the seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to flip this over and top stitch from the right side of my fabric. And that's it to prepare the gusset. You can set the main fabric aside. Then you'll take both of your lining gusset panels and you're going to repeat the same steps. So you're going to place them right sides together. Make sure all the edges are even, especially the bottom edge. And you're going to sew along the bottom with a half inch seam allowance. Finger press it open and top stitch each side of the seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Skip to the next section of directions if you're using cotton to make your straps. Included with the pattern are a variety of strap templates in different sizes and you're going to find the strap template that fits the width of your foam as well as your fabric, your main fabric. And there's a variety of sizes just because it depends what size backpack you're making and also whether you're using cork fabric or cotton. So for the medium size, I am found my templates and you're going to start with the foam and you're going to position the strap template so the side edges are even and also that bottom edge is even with the curve. Then you're going to take a marker and mark the curved edge and you'll do that for both of the foam pieces. Then take a scissors and cut along those marked lines to create a curved bottom edge. Then you'll do the same thing for the bottom edge of each of your strap pieces. So make sure that your fabric is going the correct direction if you're using a directional print. So after all of your strap ends are cut, then position two of the main fabric straps with the wrong side up and then you're going to lay your foam against the wrong side and you're going to center it 
It's a little bit smaller on purpose so that way some of the bulk stays out of the seam allowance. So you'll center each of the foam straps. Then you're going to take another strap of your main fabric and align all those edges. And you're just sandwiching the foam in between the cork fabric. Then take some of your wonder clips and you're going to clip together the layers. And you could use some of that wonder tape or a double sided basting spray to help hold everything together. And the more clips the better to help prevent your strap from shifting at all. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch the straps together with 1 8 inch and then also 3 8 inch from the sides and the bottom curve and that will help in and that will encase your foam. What's nice about cork fabric is you can leave the edges raw. So this method of creating a strap is very quick and easy and it looks very professional when it's done. So then you'll go around once more, but this time using 3 8 inch seam allowance. So here's what your strap will look like when it's done. And sometimes if you find that your fabric shifted at all and your strap seems a little twisted and it's just not sitting right, take it over to your iron and steam the cork fabric from both sides and it'll help relax the cork and the foam and it'll lay really nice and flat. Take your strap pieces. You should have two pieces with your foam attached and then also two without. So you're going to find the strap template included with your pattern for the correct width of strap you're making. So if you're making cotton straps, you'll need the 3 inch strap template. So what you're going to do is position the template on the bottom of a strap and align the side edges and take a marker and mark the curved edge. And you'll do this for all four pieces. So you can set the template aside and grab a pair of scissors and cut along those marked lines to create a curved bottom edge of each of the straps. Then you'll take one of the pieces of fabric without any foam and put it right sides together with each of the foam pieces. So your fabrics will be right sides together and the foam will be on the back side like this. And you can either pin these together or use some wonder clips to hold the layers together. And you'll take each of the straps over to your sewing machine and you'll start sewing on this top edge all the way down around the curve and back up to the other top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So after sewing, then you're going to trim the seam allowance to 1 8 inch wide. Just be careful that you don't cut through the stitches. And this will help reduce the bulk and make it a little bit easier for turning it right side out. So at the top of the strap, you'll just separate the two fabrics and push with your thumbs. And just continue to work the strap until you have the entire strap turned right side out. And use your fingers to roll the seams to make sure that all the seams are flattened to the very edge of the strap. And then take this over to your ironing board and give it a good steam and press. Make sure everything is nice and flat. So here's our strap after giving it a good press. Now you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch around the sides and the bottom curved edge with an eighth inch seam allowance. And then you'll go back and stitch around again, but this time with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. 
So that's it, one strap is done, and you'll move on to the other strap and repeat the same steps. The next step is to attach the ladder lock buckles. These are ladder lock buckles, and they allow you to adjust your straps and make them different lengths by just pulling on them. And these ridged bars here, and then also on the back side, help keep tension and prevent your strap from slipping. So they're a really unique piece of hardware. And so we're gonna start with these short pieces of webbing. This is your strap adjuster A. You have two of them, one for each buckle. And you're gonna start by folding the top edge over to the wrong side, about a half of an inch. And really there is no right or wrong side, but just for explanation, um, this will be the wrong side, whichever side you choose to fold the strapping to. And then you're gonna pin it in place. Then make sure you have your buckle positioned as so. So you should have a smooth bar on the top and then the second bar has the ridges on it. So you're gonna slide the end, the raw end, over that smooth bar of the ladder lock buckle. And then you're gonna fold it on the back side to meet those other raw edges. So the raw edges should be together and you could add another pin. Okay. So you can set that piece aside and then you'll repeat to attach the other adjuster to the other buckle. And one other tip, if you are using a nylon webbing, then you might find that you're getting all these little frayed ends come from the raw edge. So before you do your folding, you can take a lighter and just lightly go across each end to help melt those raw ends. Just like I said, lightly do it. Don't melt it too much because then it'll be thick um, and a hard piece of plastic to sew through with your sewing machine. But if you just lightly melt it, you'll be fine. So you'll set those aside for the moment. Then you're gonna take both of your strap pieces and we're gonna mark two inches up from the bottom curved edge. And this will be the placement for our strap adjusters. And I'm using cork fabric for my straps, so I could take a piece of Wonder Tape or Clover double-sided basting tape and put it on the back here um, to help hold it down. Otherwise, you could um, pin it in place if you're using cotton. But I'm just going to hold mine in place while I sew, and I'm going to center it as best I can on my strap. And you're going to stitch with an eighth inch from starting at the top edge going across down the side, sew about an inch down, sew across the strap and back up, and then if you'd like, you can also sew an X in the middle for reinforcement. And you'll do that for both of your straps. And I'm just gonna sew across the top edge one more time for reinforcement. And then you'll repeat to attach the opposite strap adjuster. No matter which size you're making, we'll start by marking a horizontal line an inch and a half down from the top edge. Mark all the way across. Then you're going to find the center and mark the center. And from there, you'll measure an inch and a half from each side of the center and make a mark. And 
from each of those inch and a half marks, it might be easier to create a vertical line. And this will help with positioning our handle. Then take your handle and you're going to place it against the right side of your fabric and you're going to align these raw edges even with the horizontal line and the inner edge of the handle along each of those inch and a half marks that you made. And I'm going to use a little piece of wonder tape to help hold this in place. But you could also pin it in place if you're using um, regular cotton fabric. So now I'm just going to press the tape down in place and that'll help hold it while I sew. So after you have your handle positioned, you're going to take it over to your sewing machine and top stitch each end of the handle with an eighth inch seam allowance. And I make sure to back stitch a few times because you don't want this to come out. And don't worry, in a minute we're going to cover it up um, so you won't see the raw edges. But for now, we're just going to top stitch the very raw edges with the eighth of an inch. Next, we're gonna measure up two inches along both sides. You're gonna measure two inches up from the bottom and mark. Then you'll take both of your strap adjuster B pieces and you're gonna align the raw edges, the short raw edge along the side edge here, and then you'll have the bottom edge of the adjuster even with that two inch mark. And I'm just gonna use a wonder clip to hold it in place and it'll be the same for the opposite side. And then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch those raw edges 1 8 inch from the edge. The next step is to position the padded handles that we made earlier. So you'll want to have the buckle side face down and you're going to center one strap over each end of the handle. And you'll make sure that those raw edges are even with the horizontal line that we marked earlier. And you'll want to make sure that the padded handle is going towards the top of the backpack. So you can use some pins or wonder clips um, to hold it in place or some double sided tape. And I'm just going to press it down to adhere it in place. And I'm even going to put some wonder clips on the top corners just to prevent it from moving and make sure that everything stays straight. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch both of the ends of the strap in place one eighth inch from the raw edge. Next we're going to position the facing. So first we're going to mark one inch down from the top edge on both sides. Then take your facing and you're going to have it even with the one inch mark on both sides. And this will cover up the raw edges of your handle and your straps. And you're going to top stitch an eighth inch on each of the long edges. And you can use wonder clips, pins, or wonder tape to hold it in place. I'm just going to use some wonder clips and hold it as I sew. Alright, one last step to prepare the back is to attach the other end of the adjuster to the ladder lock buckles. So you're going to connect the left side pieces and then also the right side pieces together. So make sure that your strap adjuster B isn't twisted at all. Make sure it's flat and keep your thumb on that top edge so you know which side is the top edge. Then on the end of your strap, you're going to thread it through and over that ridged portion of the ladder lock buckle. So you're going to come from underneath, go over the buckle, and back down. 
going down the opposite side of the ridged part. And then you're going to fold the raw edge of the strap a quarter inch to the wrong side and then a quarter inch again. So it'll tuck those raw edges inside and you can kind of make sure that they're tucked in and take a wonder clip and hold it together. And then you'll top stitch the end of the strap adjuster with a quarter inch seam allowance and you'll do the same thing for the opposite side. Take the zipper that you're going to use for the flap and if you're using zipper by the yard you can check out my YouTube channel for a tutorial on how to make a double slide zipper that you need for this project. Also if you're using zipper by the yard or your zipper happens to have raw edges on the end of the tape, take this over to your sewing machine and sew across each end of the raw edge about a quarter of an inch and that'll help prevent your pulls from coming off the tape. You'll also have four tabs cut out of your main fabric and you're going to take one tab and place it against the wrong side of your zipper with the right side of your fabric face up and you're going to line up the inch and a quarter edges here. Then you're going to take another one of your tabs and place the right side of the fabric against the right side of your zipper. So you're going to be sandwiching the zipper in between two of the zipper tabs. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew across the zipper with a half inch seam allowance. And you'll do the same for the opposite side of the zipper and the remaining two tabs. Then you're going to fold each tab away from the zipper and you can just finger press it. And now the tabs should be wrong sides together. Then you're going to top stitch an eighth inch from the seam on each of the tabs. So now you're going to take your main fabric flap that has the foam attached to it and you're going to position the zipper on the sides and the bottom edge. So you're going to line up the top corner of the tab. And you're going to place the zipper right sides together with your fabric. So line up that top corner with the top corner of the flap. And add a clip. And then I like to attach the opposite top corner right away. And then I continue clipping around the sides and the bottom edge and that way I know I'm getting an even fit to my zipper. And you might want to move your zipper pulls so they're on one of the straight edges otherwise they get in the way when you're on the curves. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew the zipper to the flap with a quarter inch seam allowance. And that way I know my zipper will fit evenly around the flap. And for this step, it's helpful to have a zipper foot or a narrow foot for going around the zipper. Otherwise, you'll just move the pulls out of the way as you sew. One other tip is you can use a stiletto to help position the zipper. You don't have to puncture through the material um, necessarily, but it'll just help you guide the zipper and keep the raw edges even along the side. So when you come to your zipper pulls, you can cut the threads and then just slide them out of the way past where you've already sewn. That way they don't get in the way sewing the rest of the zipper. And just make sure you pick up where you left off and don't forget to backstitch. So move those zipper pulls back to the center. Then you're going to take your lining flap piece and place it right sides together over the main fabric and the zipper and you're going to align all the edges and clip it in place.
and I used a lot of clips to make sure that the zipper stays tucked inside. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance on the sides and the bottom edge. Then you can take a scissors and cut little snips on the curved edge and that'll help relax the corners and have a nice tight corner. Then we're going to turn the flap right side out and make sure everything looks good, nothing got caught anywhere that we didn't want it to. And you can finger press this or give it a good steam and then take it over to your sewing machine and top stitch an eighth of an inch on the flap side from the seam. and top stitch an eighth of an inch from the seam on the flap side. We are getting so close to finishing our bag. This is getting really exciting. All of our pieces are assembled. We just have some finishing touches and then we can put the whole bag together. Next, we need to round the bottom corners of the front of your bag. So this will add some shape to your bag and make it a little bit easier to assemble. So included with your pattern is a two and a half inch circle template and you're going to position this in one of the bottom corners so that way each side of the circle matches up with the raw edges and you're going to trace the curved edge of the circle on both sides and then you'll take a scissors and cut on that marked line. So you'll repeat the same process for the back side of the backpack. So make sure all of your straps are folded out of the way and you're going to round both of the bottom corners. And you'll also round both bottom corners of your lining pieces. So you should have a lining front which is a little bit shorter and the lining back. So round both bottom corners of each piece. So you can set those pieces aside as well. And lastly, we are going to round both top corners of the flap. And depending on which size you're making, you might trim off a little bit of the zipper tape. Um, and if you do, that's okay. It's gonna get sewn into the seam later on. Okay, and we're ready to move on to assemble the backpack. First, we're gonna fold the front in half to find the top and the bottom center. You can set the back piece aside and we're gonna start with the main fabric front piece. Take your main fabric gusset and you're gonna match that center seam that we made earlier with the bottom center of the front and then also you want to make sure that you're aligning the shorter edge of the gusset with the front piece. So you're going to place them right sides together, match the bottom center with the seam on the gusset, clip that in place, then match the top edge of the front with that top lower edge of the gusset and do that on both sides. Then what I like to do is clip the straight edges and then I can ease in the curves if there's any that I need to ease in. And the more clips the better to hold all the layers together. Then you're going to sew the gusset to the front with a quarter inch seam allowance on the sides and the bottom edge. So 
now you're going to attach the opposite side of the gusset to the exterior back in the same way. So you'll match up that center bottom and then also the top edges first. Clip the straight edges and then ease in your corners. You'll also want to make sure that your straps and handles stay out of the way while you sew. So I'm just going to roll up my strap and clip it together in a few spots to make sure it doesn't accidentally get caught in the seam. And again, we're sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. And don't be afraid to squish the bag down and tell it who's boss because we're using foam and the foam will pop right back into shape. So squish it every direction that you need to so that way you have an easy area to sew. So double check all of your seams to make sure that you caught both sides and you can leave the exterior wrong side out and set it aside. Now we're going to repeat the same steps for the lining pieces. So first we're going to fold each of the lining pieces in half to find the top and bottom center. And you can set the back piece aside for now. We're going to start with the lining front. You're going to take your lining gusset and we're going to match the shorter edge with the front just like before. But first we're going to match that center seam of the gusset with our bottom center of our lining piece. And this time I'm going to pin in place. Then you'll match those top edges. Then continue pinning on the straight edges and ease in the curves. So this time, to help your lining fit better inside your bag, what I like to do is start at the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. It's the same seam allowance that we used for the exterior. And then, as you sew down the side, you gradually increase to half inch. So you'll increase as you get about two inches down or so, then you'll be at about a half inch seam allowance. And you'll continue with a half inch all the way around up to the other side and then you gradually decrease back down to a quarter. So that way the inside of your lining is just a tiny bit smaller and it'll fit better inside your bag and it won't be loose or saggy inside. Then you're going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter inch wide and that'll help reduce some of the bulk inside the bag. Then you'll attach the opposite side of the gusset to the back side of the bag just as before. Then you can turn the lining right side out and you can set this piece aside for later. Then take your assembled flap and we're going to fold it in half to mark the top and bottom center. Then you're going to take the main part of your bag, make sure your handle is tucked down inside and you're going to place the main fabrics together. You'll want the zipper on the front side of the bag and then the back of the flap will be against the back side of the bag. And you're gonna match up the center marks first. And clip that in place. And then you're gonna continue clipping around the top edge. 
when you get to the seams, I would finger press them open. That'll just help distribute some of the bulk. And once you have it all clipped, you're going to sew around the entire top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And remember, you can push the bag out of the way since we're using foam. It'll pop right back in shape. So don't be afraid to push it out of the way while you're sewing. Then make sure there aren't any spots that you missed and didn't catch. Then you can unzip the zipper and my zipper just slides open but if you can't get yours to slide open then you can put your hand through the zipper pocket zipper and reach up and unzip the zipper from the inside. So unzip the zipper all the way. So here's what your project should look like. Then you're going to take your lining and place it right sides together inside your bag. You're going to line up the center marks on the front and the back and you'll also line up the side seams and the top raw edge and you're going to clip all the way around the top and you'll sew all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance. So remember to be conscious of your zipper pulls as you're sewing around and just make sure that they don't swing into the seam allowance by accident. So now we're ready to turn our backpack right side out. So open up the zipper pocket and you're going to turn the entire bag right side out through the zipper pocket opening. Then you can push the lining down inside the exterior and you're going to roll that top edge where and have the zipper on top and you're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch around the entire top edge. Then you'll also take out the lining from the zipper pocket and line up those folded edges and then you can top stitch this with your sewing machine an eighth of an inch from the edge too and that'll close up the hole in the zipper pocket.
Be sure to share pictures of your backpack when you're done. I would love to see your completed project.